Wednesday, September 27th. The coach wouldn't let Victor practice today because of his stitches. He stomped away, threatening to go home and pull them out himself. Once again, I got put in his place. I had a couple of opportunities to score against Chandra, but I didn't. Victor returned near the end of practice, carrying a super big gulp from the 7-Eleven. He stood down in the far goal, where I usually stand, and, as usual, the ball never went there. He started to get on Joey's case, telling him to stop standing around doing nothing. But the coach soon noticed him and told him to get out of there. After practice, I got my bag and started walking with Joey when Victor fell into step behind us. His boys, of course, were right behind him. Hey, fisherman, since you're me now, do you want a drink of my big gulp? No, thank you, Victor. What, you think you're too good to drink out of my big gulp? Yes, I am. Tino, Hernando, and Mano started laughing. Victor smiled and continued, Hey, fisherman, who's this boy who's always following you around? I glanced at Joey. He was looking straight ahead. I don't know, Victor. Why don't you ask him? Victor tapped Joey on the shoulder with his cup. Hey, yo, why are you following fisherman around all the time? Joey looked upset. He didn't know how to handle this. I smiled to show him that Victor was just messing around, but he wouldn't even look at me, and he wouldn't answer. I knew that things were about to get worse. Victor tapped him again a little harder. His voice got a little louder. Yo, I said, why are you following Fisherman around all the time? You his boyfriend or something? Joey turned towards him angrily. No, I'm not. Victor ignored him and started in on me. Fisherman, you can't take two steps without this boy following you. What's up with that? Is he some kind of fish, maybe? Does he hope you're going to catch him? The boys behind Victor were getting into it now. Victor turned to Tino and said, What's that fish your daddy has a picture of? You know, that fish picture that's hanging up in the hut? Tino shook his head. What are you talking about? Your daddy has that old magazine ad on the wall making fun of Tio Carlos. Tino thought about it and then yelled out, Sorry, Charlie! Yeah, yeah, that's the dude. Sorry, Charlie. Charlie the tuna. He's always trying to get caught. He's always hanging around trying to get on the hook, right? He poked Joey again. Is that you? Are you Charlie the tuna? The boys were laughing wildly now. I spoke in a calm voice to Joey. Just chill out. But he wouldn't chill out. He was letting it get to him. Victor kept after him. Starkists don't want tunas with good taste, Charlie. They want tunas that taste good. The boys were laughing like maniacs now and slapping hands. Do you understand the difference, my man? Joey continued to stare straight ahead, his face red, his jaw clenched. We reached the green pickup truck and the boys piled into the back, still laughing about Joey. We continued on through the school. He didn't say a word until we were standing out at the curb. So what was that supposed to be? Some kind of initiation or something? Yeah, yeah, don't take it so seriously. That's just Victor. Did he ever miss with you like that? Sure, on the first day I went out for the team. And then he stopped? Yeah, yeah, sure, he stopped. Joey stared down the street looking for Mum's car. I didn't have the heart to tell him the rest of it. Victor might stop messing with him, but his name will be Charlie the Tuna from now on. Mum pulled up, and Joey hopped into the back seat without a word. I got up in the front and noticed that Mum was staring at something ahead of us. She pulled up ten more yards to where Mia and Nito were standing. She rolled down the window, smiled, and said, Hello, girls. Maya smiled back. Hello, how are you? There was an awkward silence until Mum said, So, how is it, playing against these boys? I'm not sure Maya understood the question. She answered, Oh yes, some of them are quite good players. I think that it's great that you have a co-ed team. I really do. Thank you. Mum rolled the window back up and pulled away. I said, what was that all about? I just wanted to encourage those girls a little. No wonder Maya seemed confused. I said, Mum, Maya doesn't need too much encouragement. She's the top scorer in the country, or in the county. Numero uno. She'll make the all-county team for sure. Mum's jaw dropped. Are you serious? That tall girl, she'll be on the all-county boys team? Yeah, so will Sh Sh Chandra if she doesn't get hurt. That's fantastic. 
Does Mr. Donnelly know about this? Mr. Donnelly? Mr. Donnelly from the Tangerine Times. This should be in the newspaper. Don't you think so, Joey? Joey was sulking pretty heavily in the back. I don't think he even heard her. We drove the rest of the way in silence. We turned into the entranceway to Lake Windsor Downs and then down onto Joey's street. It was a weird sight. The houses on either side of his were completely covered by huge, bright blue tents. They had signs posted all around them, danger, poison gas. Mum tried to make eye contact with him in the rearview mirror. Joey, why are your neighbors getting their houses tented? They gotta get fumigated, he said. Fumigated for bugs. We've all got bugs. You all do? Your house too? Yeah, the whole street, I think. What kind of bugs? I don't know, roaches, termites. So are you getting one of these tents put over your house? Yeah, next week, I think. We pulled into Joey's driveway. I could see the tents better now. There were really big pieces of blue canvas tied together with ropes to hold in the poison fumes. Mum said, How long do you have to stay away when they're fumigated? Two days. Well, you're welcome to stay with us. Hugh and Paul do everything else together. You may as well sleep together, right, Paul? I thought to myself, Perfect, Mum. The perfect thing to say under the circumstances. Joey got that upset look on his face again. He muttered, I don't think so, and went inside. Mum turned to me. What's with him? Why wouldn't he want to come to our house? I shrugged and said, I don't know. But of course I do know. Joey hasn't set foot in our house since the day he met up with Eric and Arthur. He will probably never set foot in it again. But Mum could never understand that. For J Joey... Our house may as well be covered with canvas and bound by ropes because it's filled with poison.